Good morning. Welcome. Good to see you here on this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. Now, if you are a warrior, today's message is for you, definitely. So uh, be ready to hear that. Uh, I should mention, I changed the hymn of the day. So 476 up here is right, uh, which goes really well with our text today rather than 776. So it's correct up here after the sermon. Uh, next Sunday, we're, have, we're welcoming our new members. Uh, we will have six new members uh, that we're welcoming in, but I happen to know, I think just two of them will be with us, but we're going to have six, so that'll be exciting. And we're going to welcome them with a potluck brunch. Right after worship, uh, we will eat together and welcome them uh, with our favorite dishes. Uh, and we'll also do a blessing of the backpacks or briefcases or what have you for everyone that's going back to school uh, soon. Uh, bring in whatever you're going to use to carry your stuff or just bring yourself and we will give you a blessing as school starts. Finally, there is coffee talk today, so uh, please join us downstairs after worship. With that, uh, I invite you to uh, sing our opening hymn. It's on page 717, Come All You People. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You are the treasured people of the Lord, people holy to the Lord our God. Keep the words of the Lord in your heart. Teach them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask except through the merit of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now enjoy some special music. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. matters now is everything you think of me in you I find my worth in you I find my identity Ooh, oh, you say I'm loved when I When I think I am weak And you say I am held When I am falling short And when I don't belong Oh, you say I am yours And I believe Oh, I believe What you say All I have and now I'm laying it at your feet You'll have every failure, God You'll have every victory Ooh, oh, you say I am loved When I can't feel a thing When I think I am weak And you say I am held When I am falling short And when I don't belong Oh, you say I am yours And I believe Oh, I believe What you say Say. 
Thank you, Megan. That was lovely. I just had a sermon a couple weeks ago about our fear of not being enough. So I wish you had been there to give the exclamation point that day. Uh, I'd like to invite the children to come up for the children's sermon, please. As we sing together, Jesus Loves Me, printed in your bulletin. coming up today you guys good to see you do you guys know what it means to worry have you heard of worrying before you know what it means does it mean they'll be like scared that something might happen yeah you guys don't ever worry do you do you ever worry you do oh, I worry too there's a lot of things that we can worry about can't we have you ever had somebody that you loved, maybe a grandparent or a parent, get sick? Or an aunt or an uncle, somebody gets sick? Uh, have you ever had a pet go missing? I had that happen just last week. My daughter's cat went away and I couldn't find him and I was a little bit worried. How about things like learning to tie your shoe? That can be hard sometimes, right? Sometimes kids can worry, I don't think I'm ever going to get it. We might also worry that we do something so bad that Jesus might not forgive us, right? Could we ever be worried about that? There's a lot of people who worry about that. Uh, but you know what? In our gospel lesson today, Jesus says we don't have to worry about anything. Just as God provides the clothes that you're wearing. You guys look great today, right? You got some nice, fun, cool, and beautiful clothes on. How about food? Did you guys have breakfast today? Yeah? We, were, we might worry, he says, that we might not have food. But have you guys seen birds, blackbirds, or any kind of birds flying around? Have you ever seen birds flying around? Have you? Uh, do birds plant seeds? Do they grow crops? Do they harvest crops and put them in a barn? No, birds don't do this. But does God give them food? He does, right? How about flowers? You know about beautiful flowers, don't you? Are these the ones that are from your garden? You see those white ones there? Do you know what those are called? They're lilies. And we're going to talk about them in our gospel message today. Aren't they beautiful? Do they have to clothe themselves? No, they just grow like that, right? Did God have to make them that beautiful? No, but he did because he loves the lilies, and guess what? He loves you too, right? He claimed you as his kids, his children, that he loves in the waters of baptism, and he said he's going to give you all that you need while you're here on earth. Everything that you need, he says he's going to give to you. And he's especially going to give you forgiveness and new life, right? He's going to keep telling you over and over again that he loves you no matter what. Does that sound pretty great? Yeah. And he wants you to believe this and to trust in this and to keep hearing it again and again and again because he doesn't want you to worry, right? 
He wants you to know that you rest safely in his hands. Would you guys pray with me? Can you repeat after me? Do you guys know how, to, how do we pray? We put our hands together, right? And we bow our heads and we close our eyes. Can you repeat after me in the congregation too? Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for giving me all that I need. Help me this week to remember your promise that I belong to you. Amen. Thank you guys so much for coming up. You can grab a treat on your way back to your families. first lesson is from Genesis chapter 15 verses 1 through 6. After these things the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid Abram, I am your shield, your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, you have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 33, verses 12 through 22, and we will read it responsively. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. From where he sits enthroned, he watches all the inhabitants of the earth. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. Truly, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. <laughs> Our second lesson this morning is from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 16. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain's. Through this, he received approval as righteous, God himself giving approval to his gifts. He died, but through his faith, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken so that he did not experience death and he was not found because God had taken him. For it was attested before he was taken away that he had pleased God. And without faith it is impossible to please God. For whoever would approach him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith Noah, warned by God about events as yet unseen, respected the warning and built an ark to save his household. 
By this he condemned the world and became an heir to the righteousness that is in accordance with faith. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called out to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. Here ends the reading. Gospel according to St. Luke, the twelfth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap, they have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? If then you are not able to do so small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying. For it is the nations of the world that strive after all these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for his kingdom. And these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I come from a long line of worriers. I can remember my grandfather calling my mother to share in graphic detail his worries over his health. 
My mom has trouble sleeping, I think largely in part due to her worrying. I, myself, used to have terrible bouts of worry, which thankfully have lessened quite a bit since hearing the gospel. How about you? It's estimated that 18% of adults in America suffer from an anxiety disorder, though only 37% of them receive treatment. In addition, now listen to this, a whopping 25% of children ages 13 to 18 are afflicted by anxiety disorders. 25%. That same percentage of elderly Americans, again, 25%, are also afflicted by anxiety. So what happens to your body when you worry excessively? Well, the fight or flight mechanism kicks in, preparing you to either run like a bear is chasing you or to battle an enemy with your broadsword. All of these overkill. Your nervous system gets triggered to release stress hormones, which speed up your heart rate and breathing, raise your blood sugar, and send more blood to your arms and legs. Over time, this can make you more likely to have high blood pressure, a heart attack, or a stroke. The muscles in your shoulder and neck can tense up, leading to headaches. I'm familiar with that. Worry can do damage to your immune system, making it harder to fight off disease, or damaging your immune system to such an effect that your body attacks everything. Your stomach can also be affected by worry, which causes ulcers and acid reflux, not to mention all the sleepless nights. No worrying cannot add a single hour to your life, but it certainly can decrease your life expectancy. Now, if worrying has so many drawbacks, then why do we do it? Well, when some future outcome is uncertain, we want to make sure it turns out well. Most of the time, even after we've done all that we can to prevent a bad outcome, we can't eliminate the possibility that something could still go wrong. Maybe it's missing a flight, or getting sick, or messing up at work, or having a poor harvest, or losing someone that we care about. We don't have ultimate control over whether or not these things might happen. When we have a hard time living with such uncertainty, we might return to the situation in our mind and keep turning it over, imagining every what if and how we might handle it. We're trying to control an uncontrollable situation. On top of the self-perpetuating nature of worry, there are five common fallacies that we tell ourselves about worry that compel us to keep doing it. One, if I worry, I'll never be taken by surprise. Two, it's safer if I worry. Three, parents, you know this one, I show that I care by worrying. Four, worrying motivates me. Or five, worrying helps me solve problems. But did you notice all the common denominator in all of these beliefs about worrying? Me. It's all up to me. As Jesus says, the nations of this world, the earthly kingdom, believe that they themselves must provide for all their own needs. Those of this world rely completely upon themselves as if there was no God, striving and fighting and straining to eke out a living. The weight of their whole world then rests upon their own shoulders. But, Jesus says, this isn't the way it is for you. You have a heavenly Father who knows just what you need most. And it is his good pleasure to give it to you. 
And this is the mark of a good father. He loves to give to his children. Now, in the waters of baptism, the father adopted you as his own beloved child, giving you a hope and a future. He promised to provide for you all that you need, to give you each day your daily bread. Psalm 145 says of the Lord, The eyes of all look to you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, you satisfy the desire of every living thing. And Luther likes to add, with delight. That applies to the ravens and to you. Your Father in heaven is going to keep showering you in his gifts all the days of your life so that you need not be afraid. Now, you might be concerned that people will hear this and think then that they don't have to do anything. Here's where we need to do a little teaching on vocation. After promising to provide all that you need, the Lord calls you into vocations, such as Christian, son, daughter, husband, wife, mother, father, farmer, teacher, business owner, and the list goes on and on. But these vocations are not for your benefit. As God has already promised to provide all that you need, so there's no need for you to be striving and competing and battling to get ahead. Instead, you've been called by God into your vocations for the benefit of your neighbor. A good way to think of your vocation is to picture a PVC pipe. You are God's PVC pipe. God is on one end and he's shooting his blessings through you and showering them upon your neighbors on the other side. Parents are PVC pipes through whom God sprays his gifts upon their children. Farmers are God's conduits to feed his people. And Christians having been adopted by God, given the Holy Spirit, are channels through whom the good news flows to their neighbors. Now, unfortunately, our vocations can often become burdens for us, heavy weights on our shoulders that make us weary. And so again, we worry as if God hasn't promised to provide all, for the needs of all living people, with or without us, you and I of little faith. Now when this happens, what we need is for our Father, in his good pleasure, to give us the kingdom through his Son, Jesus Christ. And so Jesus comes to us saying, Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you Rest. Your worries and fears and burdens are now lifted by this word of Christ. I forgive you all your sins. Jesus Christ and his kingdom, the unfailing treasure in heaven, are now and forever yours. And so, as we will now sing in the LBW, have no fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And all those other things, well, they will be given to you as well. Amen.
invite you, as you are able, to please rise as together uh, we confess our faith. In Christ, you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God has mercy upon you. He forgives you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. He strengthens you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he keeps you in eternal life. Amen. Sisters and brothers, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share Christ's peace with one another.
Let us pray. God, our creator, you open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living creature. With these gifts, we bless you for your tender nurture and care. Help us to delight in your will and walk in your ways through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Having the assurance of all things hoped for and with the conviction of all things not yet seen, we come, O Lord, before your throne with prayers for ourselves and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have clothed us with your mercy and delivered us from our sins that we may be your own and live under you in your kingdom forever. Place your blessings upon the proclamation of your word and prosper the work of all pastors, missionaries, church workers in their various callings. Bless those being called to your service and those preparing for church work vocations. We ask especially for you to bless all seminaries and those who teach and learn your word therein. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, because we are weak and powerless apart from you, defend us against all our enemies and bless our nation and those who lead us. Make them wise and endow them with a good heart that they may seek justice and show mercy, especially on behalf of those least able to defend themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, be with those troubled in mind and heart. Give clarity to their thoughts and bring to an end the terrors of their minds that they may know peace. Bless the counselors and hospitals that work to care for those who are a danger to themselves. And give to their families patience, endurance, and courage. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you know our needs before we ask, and yet you invite us to pray for health and healing, comfort and consolation, and peace at the last. Deliver from suffering those who are sick, and bring the healthful spirit of your grace to all who cry to you for mercy. Especially we lift up Mike Rogotsky, Ruth Peterson, the family of Ines Marks, Eileen Raditz, Dolores Stern, Darla Bittler, Diane Marks, Irene Peterson, Carolyn Becker, Lydia Jeske, Carol Meidel, Gary Buck, Tanya Hovland, Chuck Churchill, Mary Hollis Sternberg, and Alice Trebish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, though we can add nothing to the span of our lives, you have clothed us with your grace and favor far beyond what we deserve or discern. Open our eyes to your mercies, fill us with confident faith, and teach us to rejoice in your good gifts, that when we fall asleep into the arms of our Savior, we may receive the eternal treasure that does not disappoint. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, knowing that you will hear the prayers of your people and answer us with your mercy, providing all things needful and beneficial to us through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is on page uh, 721, Go, My Children, With My Blessing. Mm -hmm. 